Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com where you can order ammo with lightning fast shipping. This is a Beretta Model 85 Cheetah. It's a compact, straight blowback, double action, single action pistol. Superficially, it is similar to a couple of other guns I've reviewed recently, the Walther PPK and the Bursa Thunder. But while both of those guns are just okay at best, the Beretta Cheetah is in a totally different class. If you want a carry pistol and the more modern options just aren't doing it for you, the Cheetah is the gun you didn't know you were looking for. The Model 85 is just one of eight base models in the Beretta Cheetah series, also known as the 80 series or the 81 series. We're gonna look at the Cheetah series as a whole today, what makes them special, and what to consider if you're thinking about buying one. The Cheetahs have the trademark Beretta open top slide and a lightweight aluminum frame. They are double action, single action with a frame mounted safety. You can find them in 380 ACP, 32 ACP, and 22 long rifle. Beretta started using the name Cheetah sometime in the 1990s, but they were actually first released back in 1975 simply as the Model 81 and 84. The 81 was a 32 ACP with a double column 12 round magazine. The 84 was basically identical, but it was chambered for 380 ACP with a 13 round mag. The 80 series was designed for the law enforcement market primarily in Europe and other countries outside of the US where small calibers were considered acceptable for duty use. It's had a fair amount of success in that role and I believe they are even still in use in some of those places. In the early 80s, Beretta debuted single stack versions of the Cheetahs, the Model 82 with nine plus one rounds of 32 ACP and the 85 with eight plus one rounds of 380. These four models were and still are the most popular and well-known variants of the Beretta Cheetah. They all have the same exterior dimensions. They all have 3.8 inch barrels, but they're not the only Cheetahs. The Model 87 showed up in the 1980s and was the first Cheetah chambered for 22 long rifle. The standard 87s look identical to the other single stack Cheetahs. Later on, Beretta added the 87 target to the lineup, but it's almost unrecognizable as a Cheetah. It's single action only with a six inch barrel and a RoboCop style counterweight at the muzzle. The Model 89 was an early version of the 87 target that's distinguishable by the target style wraparound wood grips. The Model 83 was, as far as I can tell, never marketed in the US. It's essentially the same as the Model 85, except for a four inch barrel and mags that are limited to seven rounds. That leaves the Model 86. This is also similar to the 85 with one major exception. It has a tip up barrel, just like the pocket size Beretta Tomcat and Bobcat. Now I don't have a Model 86 here, but here is a Bobcat. You push this lever forward and the barrel tips up so you can load or unload the chamber. Like most blowback pistols, it takes a lot of force to rack the slide on the Cheetahs. The tip up barrel offered a solution for people who have trouble with that. Unfortunately, the 86 is now one of the more rare and expensive variants of the Cheetah. Some of our regular viewers might have noticed that I tend to have a fondness for guns that are a bit dated, but not quite obsolete yet. And the Cheetah is no exception. The size is similar to a lot of modern compact polymer nine millimeter pistols. You could make the argument that those guns are superior in most respects. Even so, nothing has come along that quite replaces the Cheetah in the exact niche it fills in the pistol market. They are generally very durable and reliable, and that's because even though it's a small caliber pistol, it's built to the standard of a duty pistol. It was designed to be fired a lot and carried and to withstand a fair amount of abuse. It's kind of like a miniature Beretta 92, and that's nice because even the 92 Compact is a pretty hefty gun. 
In the early 20th century, Europe produced a lot of duty sidearms chambered for small calibers like 380 and 32. So that alone doesn't make the Cheetah unique, but the Cheetah was one of the last of those designs. So it has a few refinements that are lacking in something like a Walther PPK or a Makarov. Specifically, I think the Cheetah has very well thought out ergonomics. The controls are all very easy to reach and it's a pretty comfortable gun to shoot for most people. It's also one of the only small caliber duty pistols that's available with double stack magazines. In fact, the only other one I'm aware of is the CZ82-83, which is also an excellent pistol, despite the fact that it looks like it took a hard tumble from the peak of Mount Hideous. Last I heard, the Cheetah is technically still in production in Italy, but there are always rumors that it's about to be discontinued. Beretta USA periodically imports them in small batches. There are also plenty of used ones out there. If you have any interest in owning an 80 series pistol, there are a few things you should probably know, starting with the different generations. You can easily identify which of the five generations an 80 series pistol belongs to by the suffix after the model number. Now I'm not gonna go over all the little differences between each generation, but there is one major change that bears mentioning when they transitioned from the BB models to the F models in the late 1980s. That is when the sleek rounded trigger guard became more squared off. But more importantly, Beretta changed the safety lever to a safety slash decocking lever. So let's take a closer look at that. All cheetahs have a very nicely designed frame mounted safety. It is ambidextrous with a very distinct click on and off and is positioned right where your shooting hand thumb needs to be. The first three generations of cheetahs like this model 81 BB can be safely carried cocked and locked. So that's with a round in the chamber, hammer back, safety on. Now I can also carry it with a hammer down, but I have to disengage the safety and manually decock it, which is, I won't say dangerous, but less safe than a gun with a decocking lever. So now the gun is in double action mode and the hammer's in the half cock position. I can carry it like this with the safety off, or I can engage the safety, which would also disconnect the trigger completely. Now I don't have an F or an FS model here, so you have to use your imagination, but with the newer style safety, when the gun is cocked, pushing up on the safety lever engages the safety and decocks the hammer. So you can only carry those guns with the hammer down and the safety on or off. So on one hand, the newer models are easier and safer to decock. The downside is that you can't carry them cocked and locked. The newer models also have a uh, magazine disconnect safety, which you know I'm kind of indifferent about, but I know a lot of people really don't care for that. For a carry gun, I personally would prefer to have a decocker like the F and FS models, but the BB and earlier models get all the style points. That curved trigger guard and the blue finish just looks so much classier to me. And since this is not a gun I really plan to carry all that often, I'm happy with my Model 81 BB as a mostly for fun gun. It also doesn't hurt that I paid very little for it because it was a police surplus gun. Several batches of surplus cheetahs have come to the US over the years, mostly Model 81s, 84s, and 85s from Europe. The majority of them seem to be in phenomenal condition for police guns as you would expect with any surplus guns, they are extremely affordable, particularly if you buy one when a batch first comes into the country. Surplus retailers typically price cheetahs in the two to $400 range, which is an absolute steal. A new cheetah, when Beretta imports a batch, it's usually more like six to $800. They're very high quality guns and a new one is probably worth that much. So when you can buy a surplus model in good shape at less than half the price, you're getting a pretty good deal. You're certainly not gonna find a new pistol for 300 bucks that's anywhere close to the quality of a surplus Cheetah. Unfortunately, there is no reliable way to predict when a new batch of surplus guns will arrive or what specific model they will be or which retailers will have them. For all I know, there may not even be another shipment of surplus Cheetahs. So, if you want one, keep your eyes peeled and be ready to jump on it quick. 
In the US, we usually associate the Cheetah with 380 ACP. That's the most common caliber for it. But personally, I've always been more drawn to the 32 and 22 models. I've never actually had the pleasure of shooting a Model 87. They're difficult to find and kind of expensive. And that's partly because even in Europe, 22 long rifle has never been considered a service cartridge, so there are not any police surplus 87s. I have had a fair amount of range time with 380 and 32 cheetahs, and I think the 32s are severely underrated. Now, as far as terminal ballistics, 380 might be a marginally better cartridge, but the real world difference really is not huge. They're both small calibers with limited effectiveness. But with a gun of this size and weight, 32 ACP has the advantage of having almost no recoil. It's like shooting a loud 22. I tend to get better shot placement with the 32 Cheetahs simply because the sights barely move when I'm shooting it. And it's a lot more fun than shooting the 380. Now that's not to say the 380 Cheetahs have excessive recoil. They're not difficult to manage, but I do understand why a lot of people consider them to be snappy, even when compared to a nine millimeter of similar size. That's just the nature of blowback 380 pistols in general. The recoil is delivered to the shooter's hand over a shorter period of time, which gives the perception of a quick snap. So if you're really torn on which caliber to get, the good news is that you can convert the caliber of the 380 and 32 models simply by swapping the barrels if you're able to find a standalone barrel. If it's a double stack model, you will also need to swap the magazines. A lot of people disparage the single stack cheetahs because they're basically the same size as the double stacks. The grip is only two tenths of an inch thinner everything else is the same size. Now, I can't say for sure why Beretta bothered with a single stack version if they were not gonna make it significantly thinner or lighter. It could have been an issue with a specific law enforcement contract. It does make a little more sense though if you look at one of the original double stack models with the smooth wood grip panels. These panels are super thick and I could see how some government agencies may have gone back to Beretta to request a slimmer version at the expense of ammo capacity. The later checkered wood grips and the more recent plastic grip panels are a lot thinner. I bought a set of slim G10 grip panels from Lock Grips for my 81BB and I'm extremely happy with them. They're even thinner than the factory plastic grips and they give the gun virtually the same feel as a single stack. If your hands are on the smaller side or if you live in a state with magazine capacity restrictions, you might want to try a single stack model. Otherwise, the double stack Cheetah is probably the way to go. I think the biggest downside to actually carrying a Cheetah is the lack of holster selection. None of the custom Kydex holster makers that I normally use support the Cheetah currently. You can find holsters that are made to fit the Cheetah, but most of the ones I've seen are just not very good for actual carry on a daily basis. I took a chance on a Kydex appendix holster that I found on eBay. It is usable after I heated and reshaped parts of it and did some sanding and replaced the belt clips. So if your holster standards are high, be prepared to figure out some kind of DIY solution for the Cheetah. The only other real issue I have with the Cheetah series pistols is the sights. They're not terrible, but they could be better. They're somewhat small compared to the sights on modern pistols of this size category. Like a lot of other Berettas, the front sight is machined into the slide, so there's no way to swap it out for something better. As I always do with subpar iron sights, I have blacked out the rear sight with a marker and I've applied orange nail polish to the front sight. That makes the sight adequate for me, at least in daytime lighting conditions. Overall, I have very few complaints about the Beretta Cheetah. If you're a DASA aficionado like myself, and you are enlightened enough to appreciate the merits of small pistol calibers, you should definitely at least try to shoot one sometime. I doubt you will be disappointed. I also doubt you'll be disappointed if you order some ammo from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com. Give it a try, see how it feels. And if you feel like I feel, then come on, let's get a gun. <laughs>